blessings. May the spirit of the Lord God give you ears to hear. May he open your heart for wisdom, understanding, and knowledge so that you can detect his voice because his word is pure. His words are pure words. The word of God says, the word of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. So may his spirit guide you into all truth. And those who have ears to hear and desire salvation, desire heaven, you must come to Jesus for repentance and believe that he is Lord. He is Christ. The words that I speak to you is of the Holy Ghost. It is spirit and it is life. So may the spirit of God guide you in all truth. I am your brother, Joseph Herbert Jr. And when I say your brother, I'm talking to those who are who are seeking God daily, who are speaking and seeking him diligently because he is indeed a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. He wants you to seek him. I want to talk about stamina. Um, Jesus made mention in Matthew 24. Um, he talked about tribulation. Before I read that chapter, I want to, parts of that chapter, I want to make mention of what keeps the Christian, the truly born again Christian, um, at a stamina to continue to endure. Your faithfulness, your faithfulness unto God, your obedience unto God, and to receive his wisdom, knowledge, and instructions, your reverential fear of the Lord. Without fear of the Lord, without reverence, acknowledging who he is, that he made all things, he created all things, and he sent his only begotten son into the world for you because it his life describes how much God loved you. So when you believe on his only begotten son, salvation takes place. You are changed from the inside out. You are being transformed. And now you are what is called a Christian. Christ-like, saved, born again. These are the terms. Most of them is what the traditional churches describes um, what is being saved. And as I, I have to put this on real fast. Give me one second. There we go. Give me one second. All right. Back to it. I had to put the do not disturb on because I was getting notifications. So, so being born again, the, the, the traditional churches will say, um, and they, some may get it from the word of God as well, saved, born again. These are all terminologies in the word of God. It describes the same thing. Um, redeem, Jesus Christ should be your redeemer. Jesus Christ should be your Lord and Savior. So what keeps you enduring? These are the components that defines endurance to the end so that you will be saved. It's not just professing that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. No, saying it is one thing. Actually doing the word by obedience is another you can't say that you are a Christian and not obey. You can't say that you're saved and your lifestyle is completely contrary to what you said. No, you cannot be a liar. The father of all lies, Jesus described that is the devil in John chapter 8. So I want to read what Paul mentioned in Romans chapter 12. And the ver you know, one of the first things that he did mention... Out of the components of enduring to the end, which is described as your stamina, is prayer, word of God, and worship. So he says this, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. So he's talking to the believer that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. What is he talking about right here? 
your body as a living sacrifice, meaning giving your body to God, giving your heart to God, giving your mind to God. Your lifestyle is to reflect holiness and the greatest commandment to love the Lord, your God, with all of your heart. It begins in your heart. It begins with the salvation in Christ Jesus to recognize that your heart needs to be changed and transformed. So to be a present your body as a living sacrifice unto God is your reasonable service. And it says, present your bodies unto a living sacrifice, holy. Holiness is very def is a very key component to the Christian. Acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Prayer, worshiping, meditating on his word is your reasonable service to the Lord because he is holy and he is perfect. And then he says, as a commandment by the Spirit of God in Paul, he says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God gives wisdom. Proverbs chapter 2 puts it like this. For the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. So his voice is knowledge and understanding to renew your mind in the word of God by meditating on it. You are responsible in your body. You are responsible for pulling down thoughts and casting down imaginations because guess what? It exalts itself against the knowledge of God. It exalts itself against the voice of God. And so in verse three, it says, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to the, as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Your faith, your faith in God, it, it, it is a key component to endurance. Without faith, you cannot please God. Without faith, you cannot, you won't be able to see God. Jesus says to Nicodemus, Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God without faith, without faith in the Lord. Your belief on God will be of no effect. That is the truth of God's word. I want to skip down to verse nine. And it talks about the behavior of a Christian. The behavior of a Christian. And so it's Paul mentions and says, let love be without dissimulation. What, is he, what does he mean by that dissimulation? That means hypocrisy. Let love be without hypocrisy. You can't say, you can't say that you love your neighbor or love God or love your brethren and your actions are saying otherwise. Or you give grudgingly, or you you uh, you have inner thoughts that is contrary to how you ought to think, or how you should react or respond. You may it, Proverbs may mention. I'm gonna paraphrase because I can't remember specifically what it said, but if it says to the degree if he hate whoever hates and inwardly sins in his heart uh, is a liar. Now, I don't remember cor uh, very specifically what it says, but it's in though within those lines. It's within those lines. So it says, so Paul mentions, let love be without dissimulation, meaning let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. What does he mean by abhor that which is evil? Meaning hate evil. Evil can be defined as bad, morally wicked, more whatever desires that pleases your flesh that is contrary to the will of God is evil. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Evil communication invites devils. Evil communication opens doors for the spirit realm for devils to reign over you. And hold you bondage, hold you captive. That's why, again, your mind 
needs to be transformed. You need to take those thoughts captive, bring it to the obedience of Christ, enslave every thought, imprison every thought, bring it to Christ the Almighty. He is holy, he is perfect. To the obedience, he was perfect in obedience, thought, words, and deeds, so we need to follow his steps. Jesus is the is that high priest. He is the standard. And I believe it's 2 Peter. No, 1 Peter. 1 Peter puts it that way in chapter 2. And so, let it says, Abhor that which is evil. Cleave that which is good. Cleave to that which is good. God is good. Uh, there's a cliche that church folks would say that God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Which is true. It's not in the Bible, but what's in the Bible that God is good? I know in Nahum it says, God is good. He's a stronghold to them who are in the day of trouble. And he knows them that trust in him. That's what it says in Nahum chapter 1. So the goodness of God endures continually. And that's also in Psalm 52. The goodness of God endures continually so people who who walk in darkness those who walk in darkness and take pleasures of this life and willfully sin against god willfully offend and jesus warns against that jesus war warns woe to the offender woe to those he says offenses will come. Woe to those, but woe to that person whom the offense comes from. So, and what he mean by the measure of that is as a Christian, as a truly born again Christian, there will be some in this world that will highly offend, highly offend you. They don't care if you're holy. They don't care if you go to church. They don't care if you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God which is your reasonable service. They're going to say things that offend you. Your holiness, your righteousness is going to make them hate you. Jesus says these things. It's described in the book of Acts. It's described what Jesus went through. The Pharisees and the chief priests and elders hated Christ because he is the truth. His truth exposed the hypocrisy and dissimulation. His truth, his doctrine from the Father because he is the doctrine. Expose the traditional, the traditions of men that made the word of God of no effect. And Jesus Christ pricked their hearts with the truth and he exposed who they were. He said, you, your father, the devil, do these things. And he proved them to be liars in John chapter 8. He proved them to be a lie. Let me go there real fast. I got to go there. John chapter 8, he mentions some things and he made, he proved them that they were liars right in front of their faces because they said, let me see, where's that? Verily, verily, I say to you, I'm going to start in 30, I'm going to start in verse 34. It says, Jesus says this. He says, verily, verily, I say to you, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin and the servant of, abides not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed because they said there was Abraham's seed. He said, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father. and You do that which you have seen with your father. So he's making a comparison. He's about to give the distinction. They, they are clueless, clueless about what he's about to say because their father is the devil. Now, verse 39 says this. They said to Abraham is our father. They said Abraham is our father. So they believe that Abraham is his father. So Jesus reproves them and says this. Now, that's the first lie. They said Abraham is his father. Jesus reproves them with the truth. He says, if Abraham if, Abra if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of your father. But now you seek to kill me. Referencing the devil. The devil's job is to still kill and destroy. Jesus made it plenty. He, he, brought, them, he brought the truth to them. 
but now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said this. Now they just said Abraham was their father. Now they say this. Then they said to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. They just said that Abraham was their father. Now they say God is their father. Jesus Christ just proved them, made them lies right in front of their faces. They didn't even realize it. So Jesus says to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither I came of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. You are your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. So, back to Romans 12. Paul, by the Spirit, mentions let love be without dissimulation, meaning let love be without hypocrisy. He says, abhor that which is evil. Abhor means to greatly hate what that thing is, what evil is. God hates evil. Proverbs 8.13 says this, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy, the evil way. And the forward mouth I hate, meaning the perverse mouth I hate. So again, you're going to have, as a truly born again Christian, you're going to have those who offend and not care what they say around you. I'm at my job and I made, and you know, at my job, I work unto the Lord. Um, nothing gets in front of me saying and thinking who I am in Christ Jesus. So there was a situation and... My lead supervisor made mention about he was describing the problem at my job with these individuals. And I said, they need Jesus. You know, he said, he says, they're going to need something higher than that. I'm like, what? I, I didn't say what to him, but I looked at him like, are you serious? Who is greater than God? I didn't say that. These, these are the thoughts in my mind. Who is greater than Jesus Christ? Who is higher than God Almighty? Who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. So I got stirred up in the spirit. I felt the anger of God in me. And so, this man who is, who said that, now he doesn't even care. For him to be my lead supervisor, he, he don't even care what he says around me. He, he tries to even hold a conversation around me with profanity. And I go... Some other way. I you know, I block it out with my mind. Sing songs unto the Lord. Meditate on the things that are just, noble, true, praiseworthy, good report, and lovely. Any kind of virtue, any kind of praise. I meditate on those things. I meditate on the gospel of Christ Jesus. And think about the things that God wants me to focus on. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. So I meditate on the word of God day and night to keep my mind focused. So by the spirit, Paul mentions, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So back to verse 10, I'm gonna go, it says, now by the spirit, Paul mentions, be kindly affection, affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. So that's describing loving your neighbor as you would love yourself. Um, at times, the true born again Christians does get upset or grieved by the sin of the atmosphere or what we see people partake in that highly offends God Almighty because God is holy. They have no clue that he's coming back. And so Jesus Christ is the standard. Jesus Christ describes him as the door. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to life. Guess what? Few that be that find it. Who are the few that find it? His chosen vessels. Jesus says in John chapter 15, You did not choose me, but I chose you 
and ordained you that you should go bear fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give it to you. So every day when we seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, all these things will be added. We seek him first. God gives and we walk in the glory of God, no matter who's what, whoever thinks who you are. You have no shame. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ Jesus, for it is indeed the power of God unto salvation for all that believe from the Jew first and also to the Greek. So no shame for the Christian. We walk boldly in the eyes of God, no matter who is looking, no matter what people think or say or the way they carry themselves. We don't be moved. We are like pillars. We are like pillars and we grow to overcome. So we must maintain a measure of stamina. And we, we are not slothful in business, Paul mentions. Not slothful in business, meaning not lazy in doing the will of the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not lazy. We are not unprofitable because we don't want the Lord to say, you wicked and slothful servant, like he told the unprofitable servant. No, we maintain a balance. A just weight and balance is God's delight. And we are the example. We are supposed to represent a just weight and balance. And so we remain fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope. Rejoicing in hope. What does that look like? Our hope is, is solidified in Jesus. Our hope is solidified. He is the hope of glory. So every day we we are yearning for his return. We Right now, I'm looking outside the window. I'm waiting for that sky to crack. I'm waiting for the sky to crack. Yes, Jesus is coming. Many people do not believe. But my hope is in Christ Jesus. Um, first John mentions this. Um, how does he put it? Let me go there real fast. Let me go there real fast. It, it says this. I remember. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now that we are sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we will be like him. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. God is pure. He's looking for clean hands and a pure heart. Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. So your heart must be pure. You come home from work. You seek the presence of God. Ask the Lord to cleanse you from the defilement of the atmosphere. Whether you go to Walmart, whether you go to some places that is the will of God, you got to wash, cleanse your mind, be instant in season and out of season to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So we rejoicing in the hope. Patient in tribulation. Yes, things are going to happen, but God gives man wisdom. The word of God says he lays up sound wisdom for the righteous and is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. What is a buckler, brother Joseph? A buckler is a protector, one who shields and protects. He is our refuge. Again, he is the hope of glory and we trust in the Lord. Patient in tribulation continuing instant in prayer we pray without ceasing we pray everything we, we every day we pray in the gifts of the spirit which is the the gift of tongues god gives uh his people the gift of tongues to pray we don't know what we're saying but guess what we are still communicating with god according to our hearts because we want him we want god and so continuing instant in prayer Distributing to the to the necessities of saints given to hospitality. We are hospitable to whoever the Lord puts in our lives. Whether it is, let's just say, someone is in need of the gospel of Christ Jesus. Someone is in need of salvation. And we may know a person. And they know where we live at. And they knock on our door and they tell us, their problems. We have the solutions. We have the at the answer. The answer is found in Jesus Christ. We give them the good news, the glad tidings of God in Christ Jesus. And again, it is the power of God unto salvation. And we bless them 
that pers which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. What does that mean? Be not conceited. Be not arrogant. Again, I quote Proverbs 8.13 that says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, the evil way, and the forward mouth I hate. So pride, is it comes from the devil because that was found in his heart according to Isaiah 14. That was found in his heart that I will be like the Most High. I will do all these things. You know, five I wills that got mentioned. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so that was found in his heart. The Lord cast him, he cast him down. He cast him out of heaven along with a third of his angels. So we don't operate in conceit. Where's it at? I just saw it. Rejoicing with them that we do rejoice. Let's see. No, right here in verse 16. I'm, I'm going to read it again. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate, meaning humble, humbling yourself to those who are of a low estate, a low... Um, humble people and be not wise in your own conceits so it says Recom recompense to no man evil for evil meaning we are not revengeful people we don't seek revenge because we know that vengeance belongs to the lord provide things honest in the sight of all men if it be possible as much as lies in you live peaceably with all men Jesus Christ, who is described as the Prince of Peace, and peace is indeed a fruit of the Spirit. We walk in peace. We don't, we don't, we we live a stable life. We're not double-minded because a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. We maintain focus, balance, obtaining favor from the Lord. And to live peaceably is to love your neighbor as you would love yourself, which is the second greatest commandment. Even our enemies, even the person I just got through telling you about, he said that uh, when, I, when I said that person, that person needs Jesus. And he says he's going to need something greater than that or higher than that. And you still got to love that person because and tell him the truth that, hey, there's nothing greater than God. There's nothing greater than Jesus. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And if you do not believe, I'm telling you this in love because God loves you. If you don't believe that. There is a place for those who do not believe. That place is called hell. And the second death is the lake of fire. You don't want that from your life. I don't want that from my worst enemy. As I humbly and truly say that. I don't want hell for the, my worst enemy. But unfortunately, God gives that place to those who go there. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many are on it. Who are the many? Who are the ones who are on the broad way? The world loves their idols. The world loves their, their, their riches and money and pride. They want to rebel they, and may not even know it. God gives them over to themselves. They love the celebrities. They love the ungodly music that promotes death and murder and pride and even provokes men to do evil. They love evil rather than good. Isaiah puts it that way. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Yes. The Lord is. God is good in him. There is no darkness. God is light in him. There is no darkness. First John puts it like this in chapter 2. It says to love not the world. Where's that? Verse 15. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The word Father is capitalized with a capital F. The love of the Father, meaning the love of God, is not in that person. So you, if you profess that you are Christian, but you do ungodly things that makes you look like you compromise, makes, that, makes you look like you're lukewarm, the love of the Father is not in you. I didn't, this is not coming from Brother Joseph. John the Apostle wrote that, and he said it right here. If you don't understand the word of God, he said it right there. He said it right there. The love of the Father, my finger at, the love of the Father is not in him. 
Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father, the love of God is not in him. You love the world, you love the things and partaking in the events, you love the to compromise and believe the once saved, always saved doctrine, believe that it's impossible to lose your salvation when the word is contrary to that belief. The love of the Father is not in you. The love of the Father is not in you. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father. It's not of God, but is of the world. So Jesus Christ wants to deliver you from that. Wants to deliver. He wants your heart pure before his holy presence, he is every. The eyes of the Lord are on, on the evil and the good. The eyes of the Lord are on everywhere. How is that possible, Brother Joseph? Because he made all things. He makes peace. He's created light and darkness. Isaiah 45 puts it like that. I create light and I... Let me I don't want to paraphrase that one. I like to quote that one. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. It says this in verse, I'm going to read verse 6 and 7. So, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. I form the light. I and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. How can God create evil? I, I thought the, the Lord loves me. The, my God loves me. He does love you. But guess what? He has created evil too for his purpose. Those who disobey, those who act like the devil and, and love the world and the things that are in the world. He says, I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. He, does, he, does, he just described his deity. He just described his sovereignty. He just described that he is God. He does all things. Who are you to bring charge against the Lord? Who are you to question him about his sovereignty? That's That goes to show you the dangers of pride. When you have pride and you just live life carefree, nothing's going to happen to you. You think you're Superman. You think you're Superwoman and can do everything that that's in your hand and in your power. God, he will give it to you. But guess what? There's consequences. You're going to stand before God who is holy and who is just. And who is angry with the wicked every day. And you will give an account. You will give an account of every idle word in the day of judgment. That's if you die in that condition. By the fact that you draw breath from God and he and breathe his air. You have grace. What is grace? Grace is described as divine, God's divine power to, to obey him. Grace is also described as undeserved favor from God. By the fact that you are breathing his air, you have a choice to choose life in Christ or to choose the world, which is death, which is the broad way that everybody is on. And they will have their part in the lake that burns with fire if they die on the broad way. Enter through the narrow gate. Enter through the straight gate. This is the Spirit of God. Those words are written in red. Jesus says, enter through the straight gate. For straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. And few that be that find it. Who are the few that find it? Again, Jesus Christ, the Christian, is the ones who are chosen out of this world. God chose Paul and said and declared that that's a chosen vessel. He did the will of God. That's why most of the New Testament, most of the epistles are written by Paul the Apostle. Because Paul, who was very knowledgeable before he was converted, he knew the law. He thought he was doing the will of God by um, killing Christians. And, and he didn't believe in Jesus until Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus. And... He automatically said, what should I do, Lord? And, you know, of course, he was blinded for three days. But the Lord sent Ananias to lay the hands on him so he can receive the Holy Ghost and baptize them. 
And then as I make a long story short with that, Paul became one of the greatest apostle, apostles that walked on the planet. And now he's forever spinning with God. So there is no sin that God will not forgive except one. I'm not going to mention that one yet. No matter what you did in this life that, man, I'm too out of shape. I'm too, I'm too, uh. I've done so many things in this life. I, I, I don't think God can save me. You are wrong. You are wrong. Jesus offers you life and peace. When you commit to him, commit your life, your mind, and your heart to God through Christ Jesus, he changes you from the inside out. When you are baptized in his glory, he changes you from the inside out. You have to meet him in your obedience to him. Follow the Son, S-O-N, follow Him, follow Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, and that the fact that nobody comes to the Father but by Him. I'm going to read Matthew 24, because to maintain stamina describes enduring to the end. Jesus made mention in Matthew 24, as I turn there. And so he said that in verse 13. Yes. So let me go ahead and read from verse 8. Jesus says, All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. He's talking to the believer. And shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, and then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity, meaning wickedness at great measures, will abound, meaning it will exceed, the darkness will exceed in, in these troubling times, and you see it today. The love of many will wax cold, meaning the love of many will grow cold, meaning offenses will rise. Offense will rise for the believer. Tribulation will rise for the believer. If your foundation is not found in Christ, Jesus made mention, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock, the rock of offense, the rock of salvation, who is Christ, who built his house on the rock. When the rains descend and the floods come and the winds blow and it beats on that house, it will not fall for it was founded on the rock. Jesus says your stability found if your foundation and your stability is found in him. You will not be budged. You will not be moved. The word of God says in Psalms 55 verse 22 to cast thy burdens on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. God wants to make you a pillar. He wants to make you a pillar, a pillar, unmovable, unshakable, because these times and ages is dark. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil, Jesus says in John chapter 3. But then he says this in verse 13 of Matthew 24. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. The same will be saved. After you commit to Jesus and obey and follow him every day, worship him every day, meditate on his word every day, worship him every day until he comes, you will endure. Your stamina will, God empowers you. He imparts glory. He imparts power so that you can endure and make it to the end. The race is not for the swift, the word of God says. Jesus wants to empower you because God loves you. He wants you to spend forever with him. His desire, his desire is for man to not perish. His desire is for men to not die. He doesn't want you to die. He doesn't want iniquity to be your ruin. No, he wants you to commit to him because you are made in God's image and his likeness. You are made in the you are made for the glory of God. You are made, you was born to grow in the grace and the knowledge of God Almighty and represent and 
glorified Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. To him be the glory both now and forever. So he, he says, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Matthew 24, verse 13. And this God, he made mention, I got to read that too. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So the gospel is commanded by Christ Jesus, the Lord, to preach it, to preach the word. Paul mentions by the Spirit in 2 Timothy 4, he said, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Christ is holy. You have to be holy as he is holy. You need to strive for perfection unto God. Perfected holiness, Paul mentions by the Spirit in 2 Corinthians. So, going on to the perfection is, is the will of the Father and Christ Jesus. To know God. Is to have a deep relationship with them by communicating with them every day, by meditating on his word every day. You worship him, you have a good relationship with God Almighty. But if not, there, there is a way that seems right to a man. And when you recognize that ways that seem right, that is contrary to the will of God, there is a falling away of faith. Paul mentions by the Spirit about the great falling away of the faith. Great falling away. People depart from the faith. Those people will not hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. No, because they fell away from the faith. Their faith failed them. They allowed the faith in God to fail them. So how can a person... Not lose the salvation. How can a person enter into heaven. When he is not faithful. Your faith fails. Jesus will not say to you. Well done my good and faithful servant. Because you wasn't faithful. Unto the end. Because you didn't endure to the end. You allowed the tribulations to overtake your mind. And overtake your heart. It disturbed your heart. It, it, it disturbed your heart. And you begin to be un. Unbalanced. You begin, you begin to have a false balance that Proverbs mentioned. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. Yes, the Word of God says that. Proverbs, I believe it's Proverbs 11. The very first verse. It says the just weight and balance is his delight. It says that. But a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. So, to endure to the end, fear the Lord, obey him. Obey his son. Get baptized, every one of you. And seek him with your whole heart diligently. He is a reward to those who diligently seek him. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God when you're unfaithful, when you're not born again. It is a fearful thing. How you describe the how do you define the fear level? Would you sneak in a lion's den? And decide to kick one who is asleep and then try to make an attempt and run, you would not. But guess what? It'd be better if you did than to stand before a God who is holy and just and righteous, who gives the person who dies in iniquity what they deserve. He gives them hell, He gives them punishment, He condemns them. They are condemned already if you live a lifestyle of unbeat, uh, of disobedience and unbelief unbelief will not get you into heaven so jesus christ offers life moses by the spirit mentions that to cleave to him for he is your life and the length of your days the length of your days when you believe on jesus christ he gives you everlasting life and so he sanctifies you unto his glory until he comes again and he is coming back Every eye will indeed see him, even they that pierced him. All kindreds of the earth will well because of him. Even so, amen. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. This is for his glory.